Hey guys, what's going on? This is I've Got the Blues with Dustin Wood, and I'm Dustin Wood. So, uh, thank you guys for watching the videos and all the support. Um, a couple people have been asking me why I still do them since they only get like 20 views, but I don't care about how many views they get. I just do them because it helps me get some stuff off my chest. And after the last couple days, I'm clearly nuts. So... It's probably good that I get this stuff off my chest. Um, okay, so, let's see. Oh, and also, to the 20 people that actually do watch the videos, thank you. You guys are awesome, and all the support you guys give me is amazing, and you're the best. Okay, so, um, and please keep sharing and commenting and liking, and it just, uh, I have a certain kind of, uh, YouTube page, and I don't, I could care less about the likes and the comments and the subscriptions and all that crap, but because I have to pay, like, a yearly thing, they seem to care, so, yeah, just do what you can, if not, I don't really give a crap. Alright, so, um, I've, it's been kind of an up and down week uh my abscess tooth is gone which is awesome i've got this one in my leg that's driving me nuts one of my blue things and it's just medicine's not really helping it's one of those things that's just gonna kind of have to run its course which sucks um i'm trying to talk to my doctor i have an appointment this friday about kind of getting back out into the gym and maybe at least running the treadmill something because i've become a blob as you can see. You want to know what's sad is I bought a special camera that doesn't add 10 pounds and this is what I look like without the camera adding 10 pounds and that's sad. Okay so um, last Sunday I had a Royal Rumble party which was really cool. Um, I know there's not a ton of wrestling fans out there that probably watch my videos but it's something I watched basically my entire childhood. I love it. I love the drama, the improv that goes into it. I mean, these guys basically do live theater every week, which is so awesome, you know. And uh, I've just always had a passion for it. I've always loved it. So I had a bunch of my friends over for Royal Rumble, and it was fun. It was kind of weird for me, though, because uh, Darren, who's my, you know, best friend since second grade and a brother to me, was there, which he's always at pay-per-views. But also my friend Cindy, who I... I've been friends with her for a long time, but her and Darren have never really been in the same place at the same time for a long period of time. So it was kind of this weird, like, worlds colliding type thing, and I didn't think they would get along, and they totally got along, and it was cool, and it was, it was fun, and I'm excited that hopefully every month Cindy can come and be a part of this because I love having her around. She's one of my favorite human beings ever, and yeah, so there's that. The Royal Rumble, the event itself, was awesome and fun, and I I know the crowd in Philadelphia hated it. I don't know why, but I don't get why people would pay money, and good money, because it's two, $300 for the tickets to go to one of these events, and then complain the whole time, you know? Like, why would you do that? Okay, so, I'm not going to lie, I'm really enjoying the card thing, because it keeps me on point, and I get to do this really wish that would have went better. God, I suck at this. Okay, so uh, some of the questions that were left over from last time that I didn't get to because I didn't want the video to be as long as a Michael Bay movie. So uh, one of them was, do I do any kind of sports? Can I do any kind of sports because of my condition? And not really. Um, like I said earlier, I have to talk to my doctor about possibly getting back out there in the gym. Uh, one thing I do a lot of, though, and I love is archery. And, uh, it, it's really cool. I can use my upper body and, um, it's a 50 pound bow, so it's not too hard to pull back on, which is good because of my fingers and it's, it's relaxing. I love it. And it's something that I enjoy doing, you know, because as a kid, uh, well, I'll get into that with another question, but, um, Archery. I love archery and it's something that you can never master and that you always have to practice at and get better at and it's just a fun, relaxing thing to do. 
Um, <laughs> kind of a funny story, but also kind of sad. Um, I There's a field across the street from where I live here at Bulls Creek, and it's just all tall weeds and everything, and I used to go out there with an old, uh, like, shoe box that I put a target on, and I would shoot my arrows at it, but I kept losing arrows in the brush, like, I, I lost, like, 15 arrows, and after the fire happened, which sucks and was a tragedy, and you guys, you know, I'm, I'm not making light of the fire, like, the situation, but I, uh, after the fire, I went out to go just kind of survey this field that burnt down, and there was, like, all these charred arrows stuck in the ground. And I was like, there's my arrows! Just needed a fire to find them. Okay, that wasn't funny. Sorry. All right, so, archery. Yep, like it. Boom. All right, um, childhood hero. So, my childhood hero was just kind of merged into one kind of archetype, um, I, I know I've told the story before where when I first got my disease, I just kind of stayed inside. I wasn't um, outside playing a lot. I was like eight. And my mom went to this garage sale, bought a comic, a box of comic books for I think like a buck maybe. And uh, the guy didn't know what he was selling. My mom didn't really know what she was buying, but she just thought here's something for him to do. You know, comic books, little boy, he'll like them. And I opened up the box, and it was Green Arrow. It was like a hundred issues of Green Arrow, starting from issue number one. And I can still remember the feeling reading that first comic book. And just, that was my hero. I would draw all over my folders and my binders, my trapper keepers in school. Me with a hood. Me dressed like Robin Hood. You know, um, Halloween, there were so many years. I just put on a green hoodie and made a bow. I would go out into the same field that I lose all my real arrows in now and I would break off bamboo and I would tie a shoestring to it and I'd have a fake bow that I'd just run around with. And so uh, anything with Green Arrow or Robin Hood was my, was my thing, you know. And then um, I remember in class one day a teacher was talking about how Robin Hood could have been a real person and... It like opened the nerd floodgates for me and I rented documentaries and and read books and everything and, and there was a real Robin Hood and the ballads had to start for some reason. But yeah, so childhood hero, Green Arrow, Robin Hood. Um, I had a bunch of pro wrestlers I was really into. Um, Stone Cold Steve Austin. So like I would shave my head and I'd wear really tight jean shorts and, and, I, and I'd try to like work in like a Texas accent <laughs> into the way I would talk. <laughs> I'm such a dork. I can't believe I'm telling the story. Like, um, what, there's one story that I remember like so vivid is I was in elementary school. I was like in fifth grade and Stone Cold was like the biggest thing ever. And so I would walk around recess with like a chip on my shoulder. Like I'm Stone Cold Steve Austin. And and the high school didn't have a cafeteria, so the high school kids would come to the elementary school to eat lunch. And so there was a high school kid I knew because he was my neighbor at Bulls Creek. And so he walks up, and he's joking around with me, and he makes like a your mom joke, right? Joking around. And so I went, son of a bitch, and gave him the double fingers like Stone Cold did. And I turn around, and my principal is standing right there. So... <laughs> I flip off this high score, looking all tough. I turn around. There's my principal, and I'm like, "You talked about my mom." <laughs> so yeah, I got suspended, in school suspension for cussing, and then I I cried. So okay. Uh, question: My most prized possession. Um, and this kind of goes with a question I haven't answered yet, but I've gotten a few times. What's with the necklace? Um, my most prized possession is this. Um, I call them souvenirs from another life or whatever, but these, this is my most prized possession. Um, I have this crucifix right here. I'll get closer. Um, my mom bought this for me when she was going through a hard time. And I've, you know, it, my mom's gone now. She died of cancer. And it means a lot to me. You know, my mom was an amazing human being and, and never let anything, cancer or financial issues or, you know, substance issues, nothing like that bring her down and stop her from being the best mom ever. And she fought 
anything that got in her way and came out a better person for it. And I'll never forget one of the last things she ever said to me was, leave a place better than you found it. And I think that applies to everybody. The next thing is, uh, my mom wore this a few times. I found it the day she died. We got back from the hospital after she passed. And I found this in her, uh, in her, like on her vanity where it was always just trashed a million makeup things and brushes and hairsprays. And I found this, it's Aquarius, which was what her sign was. And so I, I put it on the chain with the cross just so I can, uh, I like to use these when, I, when I'm upset or I'm mad and I, I have really bad issues with anger and, and sometimes blacking out, which I'll get to in another video. But, uh, I just touched this and it makes me think of my mom or I, or I touched this cross and it makes me think of my mom and some of the stuff I've had to go through. And then uh, this is a key to my house <laughs> because I don't want to lose it. That doesn't really have sentimental value. And then this one is something uh, that a friend gave me that means the world to me. And it's just uh, when I touch it, I, th I think of her. So, yeah. Um, most prized possession. I never go anywhere without it. Um, I love it. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. So, if you guys know my friends, you probably know who wrote this message in. What do you look for in a guy? <laughs> yeah, I'm not gay. There's nothing wrong with being gay. I'm just not it. So, uh, I, what I look for in a guy is if they're a girl, I guess. I don't know. I'm not into guys, but thank you for bringing up this awkward question that I can't answer without sounding like a ginormous asshole. So, uh, if you're asking what I look for in a girl, uh, let me preface this by saying that I'm no smarter than anybody else, and I don't think I'm smarter than anybody else, but... As a society, we all kind of get stuck in a rut when it comes to conversations. And so when I run into somebody and they start telling me something and it's the same thing that they've probably told 40 other people that day. And it's like this story. It's like a monologue that they've rehearsed, you know, like where they're like, oh, I'm going to tell you about my holidays. I'm going to tell you about what I ate. I'm going to tell you about who got sick. And then I'm going to tell you this funny anecdote about what happened when I got sick. And it's like, I can see the conversation start and I can, s and it's like this thing in my head, like a diagram where I can see when someone's talking, everything slows down and I can see oh, they're going to go with anecdote this or that, or they're going to tell me something sad, or they're going to go this way, or they're going to go that way. And I can just tell in the conversation, and it's frustrating. It's nothing to do with them. It's just me. And I just, I feel like I've heard every conversation in the world already, and it's annoying, and it's this weird OCD thing with me. But it's just how I am. I'm an eccentric person. And so, um, eccentric, Katie, not eccentric. Um, <laughs> okay, so... Yeah, uh, I guess the only thing I look for, and this has only happened once in my life, was I was with a group of friends, and they were all talking, and I was just sitting there, basically finishing their conversations in my head, and then there's one person there that I hadn't met yet, they started talking, and it just clicked, it was just different, and I was like, I have no idea what this person's going to say next, and it was so refreshing and amazing, and yeah, so... That's what I look for is just being surprised and not being bored and and someone that challenges me and doesn't put up with my shit and calls me on it and yeah. So that's what I look for in a guy. Okay. All right, this is the last part. I promised a friend I would do this. Okay, let me tell you the story first. This is Sour Patch Sour Patch Kids gum. Right? Sounds about as gross as it seems. Okay, so my friend bought this thinking it was the greatest purchase ever. I told them it was a impulse purchase and you would hate it. They, as you can see, only ate one piece and was 100% right. Then they asked me, uh, because I kept giving them crap about it, if I would eat a piece on camera, even though I don't want to do this at all. But... I was kind of an idiot to this person, so hopefully this fixes things, okay? I'm sorry.
And here is my punishment. Oh god, it smells gross. <laughs> oh god. Alright, it smells so sour. I hate sour things. Ugh. Oh, I hate sour. <laughs> ah, okay, so, and this is how I got the blues with Dustin Wood. If you liked it, let me know in the comments before you're sharing, and if you didn't, oh, go fuck yourself. Thank you, bye. <laughs>